What's up and welcome to Built. Today we're working on our 1974 MGB GT and the goal today is to get the wheels to turn by themselves. Now we did get the car to run on our standalone fuel system. Then in the next, the last episode we did our floor pan and fuel cell, but we haven't plumbed that yet. This episode, we're going to work on our clutch system and brake system and hopefully get both of those functioning so that when our fuel lines come in, we can have a running car. Let's do it. That is the slave cylinder right there. Now the previous owner said that's the culprit for why this thing will not run and drive, which makes sense. It won't go into gear. What I'm concerned about is the fact that there is a giant hole where this grommet goes that goes straight into the transmission. So that is, I, that can't be good. I assume that just pushes back up in there. I don't know. I don't know anything about these. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. It's obviously made to be removed. I don't know. We'll see. But we got to get that slave cylinder off. So that is job number one. All right. So the old one is disassembled. The new one is assembled. Now, something that is interesting about these is they ship with the bleeder screw over here, which is the lower port, which I think means that it doesn't actually bleed correctly. So a lot of people have bleeding issues with these uh, slave cylinders. And um, I'm not sure why they do that, but if you move the bleeder screw up, then it should bleed properly. Another guy that I, I heard talking about it said the bleeder screw is in the right place, but you're supposed to pump fluid in through the bleeder rather than bleed the air out. I'm not gonna do that because I don't have the tools for that. So I moved this bleeder screw up We've got our new line in. You can see it's obviously in much better condition than the old one. All of it's in better condition. Um, I had to reuse the plunger, so I just ground off all the rust and nastiness on there, and I had to reuse this pin. And then we will reuse the stock bolts as well. But this thing is ready to go in, so we'll bolt it up, put fluid in this thing, bleed the air out, and hopefully we'll have a working clutch. Made in England. Pretty cool. I'm gonna guess the new one is not made in England. But it also makes me think this one is probably an OE part that has never been replaced. So we're gonna be taking care of that. The fluid looked real gross in there. All right, so it's a new day. We wrestled with this master cylinder situation most of the day yesterday. Um, I say most of the day. We wrestled with it for more, for probably an hour and a half or two and thought it was gonna take, you know, less than that. That's the deal with working with old cars though. When stuff's rusted and messed up and everything's mismatched, it just takes longer. Um, either way, master cylinders are both in now. They look great. I've got one more bolt to run on uh, and then we'll reconnect our pedals. We can move down to the slave cylinder for the clutch and then we can start the bleeding process for that. Um, and, uh, and then I think we'll be well on our way. I think I'm gonna probably replace the oil in the transmission, uh, maybe in this video, maybe off camera. We'll see, depending on what I would decide to put in there. Uh, it just looks like it's probably gonna need it. And then um, the brakes, I'm not gonna put fluid in yet because I'm gonna have to rebuild them, which I think I'm gonna do in this video. We may do that today. I feel more competent at rebuilding brakes after doing the Corolla stuff, so we'll redo that, redo the hubs, redo the bearings, all that stuff. All right, let's get to work. I went ahead and put the master cylinder in and put fluid in. You can tell I had a pretty big spill here. And it was because I couldn't get this, uh, go under the car, couldn't get the line to mount up here. There's just no room. You got a starter right here and then some other stuff. And you can't get a wrench up there. It was just really, really difficult. What I ended up doing is pulling the whole thing back apart and draining all the fluid out and then running the hose in first. So connecting this one first and then connecting to the master cylinder and then connecting the master cylinder here with the little post and then bolting everything in. So if for some reason you're following this as a tutorial, first of all, go watch JR's garage because he does some really good stuff on MGs. Um, but second of all, that is a much easier way to do it and I've got no more leaks, which is pretty awesome. But I can't bleed this thing because I don't have anyone else here and I don't have a pressure bleeder that will work with the MG. So I'm gonna have to hold off on that. All 
All right, so we're taking this and that, and we're gonna turn it into that and this. Much better. So doing hubs on these old cars is actually pretty simple. And when I say doing hubs, I mean like replacing rotors, doing uh, caliper work, and doing bearings. I'm doing them all at the same time because on like a newer car, you can basically pull your caliper off and the rotor just falls out of the way. I think it's called a floating caliper or floating rotor. Maybe it's called a floating caliper. But floating rotor makes more sense. Either way, on old cars, the rotors are bol bolted to the actual hub. So it just makes more sense to go ahead and pull everything off and replace it all if your car is worn out. I did this with the Corolla. That's the first time I've ever done it. It's super easy and you'll feel a lot better about your car knowing that the bearings are brand new, knowing that the hub has been checked out, knowing that the brakes are brand new. Uh, it just makes a huge difference and bearings are super cheap. So it makes it an easy kind of do it while you're in there sort of job. Um, Another thing I'm doing, because I run very low offset wheels on basically all my cars, is I'm putting in these brand new bearings, and specifically with the Corolla, and if we have this car in a year, I'm going to pull them back out in a year and see if low, like super low offset actually does wear out bearings more than anything else. So we're going to set the caliper aside for now. We'll get to that in a minute. The first thing that we are going to do is disassemble this. So the MG is a little bit unique. There is a washer here. That's pretty normal. Then you have your bearing and then you have a bearing race in there. We'll get that out in a minute. Those have to be hammered out. And you have your seal, which I'll just try to grab out, but I may have to I'm sure there's a removal tool for this. I don't have it. What I normally do is hit it with a screwdriver, but I was thinking maybe I could pry it out. Screwdriver it is. There you go, so you got your seal, still like any hub. Bearing, there's a bearing race in there. And then inside of these hubs, you have these little spacers. And I heard on another channel that these are there to just give some strength to the spindle. Now, I don't know if they're necessary, but they are used. And these things do spin very freely. I noticed that when I tested them out earlier. So um, there is definitely something to it. The one that I saw online had like a bunch of spacers and stuff. So maybe I'm missing that stuff. I don't know, but it seemed to spin fine. So we'll reassemble it the way we took it out. Now, you'll notice I laid this out like this. I just do that because I'm not super experienced, so that kind of reminds me how everything goes in. For bearing races, they're really easy. I take a flathead screwdriver. There's a little notch inside of here that I would try to show you on camera, but it's kind of hard to see too, so if you're doing it, there's a notch. Put the uh, screwdriver in one side of the notch, hammer it real hard, and then go to the other side, hammer it, and you just work it back and forth and it drops out. Flip it over, push that out of the way and do the other side. Well, that one was not in very good. That's why I couldn't find it. This one was already out a little bit. I'm not sure why, but either way, we're replacing it so it doesn't matter too much. Um, all right, so that's completely done. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull the hub and the brake apart. So next up, I wanna clean this thing before I start trying to paint it. And I'm gonna clean this and the brake caliper the same way. And I think it's the best way. Definitely the fastest. And it just works. You get a pack of these brushes for your uh, grinder at Harbor Freight. You've got this one, you've got this knotted cup, you've got a disc and then a bigger disc basically. And they will take all this oxidation off really, really fast and give you a surface that paint will actually want to stick to. All right, so time for reassembly. We've got basically three things, your front bearing or your outer bearing, You've got, uh, these are the wrong oils. 
So time for reassembly. Now this is all pretty fun and pretty simple. There's an outer bearing, there's an inner bearing, and there is a rear seal. So what we're gonna do first is the uh, inner bearing. It's the bigger one. These things are two pieces. One piece goes right in there like that. So the race goes in, use this tool that you can rent at any auto parts store, and you just hammer it down until it stops. Okay, you're gonna take your bearing, dip out some grease in your hand, and then there's a wide opening and a narrow opening. So you're just gonna push grease up through the wide opening until it comes out of the narrow opening, just by dragging it across your palm. Drop that little collar in, drop the bearing in. Do something about this. And it's time for a seal. So this will just go in right behind that. And then same tool, just use the bigger version and the flat side. The whole point now is to push this in flush with uh, the hub. So. Just line it up as straight as possible. Okay. And we're gonna leave it at that now. The front bearing is held in by the actual nut on the axle, so we're gonna throw that in at the very end. Move this over. All right, so now it's time to install the pads. I pushed these um, pistons back in with a C-clamp. I did say pistons. There are two pistons on this uh, brake setup, which is pretty rad. Um, I've got brake pads that are brand new. And then I also got um, the installation kit, which I think is very important when you're doing brakes. A lot of brake pads, you can buy like the installation kit with them. Some come with it. Um, but when you're doing this, I mean, it just makes sense to replace all the parts. So couple bucks totally worth it these kind of pop in here these are some of the easiest calipers that I've ever seen as far as replacing goes a lot of people don't even take them out of the car you can just do it with them on the car but that pops through there so I don't know how they perform but for maintenance these things are great so we'll take these pins that one back this one back and caliper is ready. Go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in as well. And that is basically as good as new. All right, so the rotor just sits on here and bolts back together. All right, this thing's ready to go back in the car. There we go. Now, <laughs> now it's complete. And I really do love the way that this came out. Now, when you're doing a big project like this, some advice that I can give you, if you're anything like me, it's easy to look at all this and get overwhelmed. There's spider webs, you got some like rust there, tons of dirt all over all the suspension stuff. And to think like when you pull this brake off, well, might as well go ahead and pull that off. But what happens to me is when I do that, I start pulling a bunch of stuff off at one time and it gets really overwhelming and it just shuts me down. What I like to do is take one project at a time, like brakes for example, redo the whole thing. New hardware, new bearings, new everything. Fresh, completely new. Put it back on all the dirty stuff, right? I'm gonna come back and do suspension on this car, I know that. So when I do the suspension, that's when we'll go into cleaning and painting control arms, maybe the sway bar, doing my tie rod ends, um, you know, all of that stuff that obviously needs to be done. New shocks, new springs, all that. But to keep yourself sane when working on a car that's this crazy and, and old, <laughs> um, taking one thing at a time and you can do it. And it's really satisfying to see like how much of a difference this made. I mean, it made a huge difference in just the way it looks. And obviously it's gonna be a massive, massive difference for performance. When anytime you replace old rubber lines, in fact, if you have a car that's more than like 10 years old, I would encourage you to replace your brake lines, even with just new, new uh, uh, rubber ones, not even braided. Um, it really does make a massive difference 
um, just putting new lines in and bleeding your brakes all, all the way, getting all the air out will make a huge difference. You'll be surprised how good your brakes perform. Most brakes that come on any cars are overkill. These brakes are overkill for this car. Um, and so if you have them set up right, all the air's blood out, they'll be great. All right, that's all I'm gonna talk about that. Another thing we did, uh, I'll show you guys at the end of this video, is we replaced some straps. Let me show you what we got. When we first lifted the uh, back of the car up, Alex noticed this. So these cars have limiting straps on the back, um, and this is what they look like after 40 years, 50 years, however long it's been. And I mean, just not really good. This is like keeping the axle, keeping the suspension from unloading too much. And so uh, I went online, I found some webbing versions. We replaced those. I'll show you that in just a minute. And they are way better. All right, so our brakes are replaced. I'm gonna do the rear as well. There's only one soft line for the rear, the rest is hard line. Uh, and then we'll do drums, uh, maybe in the next video, or I may not video it, depending on how it goes. I've never done drums before. So normally if I've never done it before and I feel like it's gonna take a long time, I don't film it, but we'll see. Um, but we gotta get that done and then the brakes will be complete. And then I gotta figure out what's going on with my transmission. So I replaced the slave cylinder, um, which I wasn't really convinced was the actual problem, but it definitely needed to be replaced. So we replaced master and slave and new line, just like the brakes, just got all new stuff, um, put it all in there, and the slave cylinder is functioning, but the fork that actually controls, that the slave cylinder is moving basically, the thing that actually controls the transmission, is not moving, it's locked up. I imagine it's from sitting. Um, I've talked to a few people about how to get it unstuck and uh, gotten everything from hit it uh, with like a hammer to pull the transmission out. So um, I'm gonna try hitting it first, and seeing if that loosens it up. If that doesn't, then we may be pulling the engine in the next video and uh, just kind of going through all that. I got a bunch of parts to put on it anyway, so we could do that while it's out. It'd be way easier. Um, but that's gonna be the next thing. Once that's done, this thing will be able to drive and we can drive it down the road, which I'm really excited about because it hasn't driven in 27 years. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of like a techie sort of video, which is different for us, but um, the transformation is real and I hope it was helpful for you. If you've got a car that needs new brakes that's old like this, go ahead and try rebuilding the hubs. I think it's actually really fun, and I love the way it looks whenever it's all said and done. I mean, this looks awesome. All right, hope you guys have a great uh, couple of days till I see you again. Uh, the secret word of the week is going to be 6 a.m. It's letters and numbers. 6 a.m. is the secret word of the week. Some of you will know what it means. If you do, comment below. See you in the next one.